Hello and welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez and this is Interviews from Quito, the program where we explore the big challenges facing this country and the region. Five months into the COVID-19 pandemic, and Ecuador has been left with not just a sanitary crisis, but a political crisis and even an economic crisis. All of the government's missteps, unpopular decisions and corruption scandals, as we'll deal with thousands of deaths due to the pandemic, have brought us to this point. So what went wrong? If the government of Lenin Moreno followed one of the most stable periods, politically and economically, then why are we going through one of the most difficult times in our history? To discuss this, we have economist Diego Borja. Thank you, Diego, for joining us. Thank you, Carla. Good morning for all people of Telesur. So we're dealing with a health crisis, but also an economic and political crisis. How did we get to this place? Uh, yes, the crisis Ecuador is experiencing is the greatest in his entire Republic history. The COVID-19 pandemic has only deepened it. Before the pandemic, there had already been a great fall in the economy, institutional destruction and social decline. The government of Benin Moreno has not given priority to defending the life and health of the people. Between March and July this year, there are already 24,000 people who have died excessively compared to death in past year. Ecuador occupies of the first places in terms of deaths per inhabitant and in terms of patients per inhabitant, and the last place in terms of diagnostic tests per inhabitant. For instance, in the midst of the pandemic, the government had reduced spending on public health. Those of doctors and health workers have died for lack of productive equipment. And along with health crisis, the country has also fallen into an unprecedented economic crisis. Thousands of workers have lost their jobs and thousands of companies have gone bankrupt. Unemployment and poverty have increased. Diego, would you say that, as the government said once, that these austerity measures are necessary because uh, we are in a bad economic place, but even though we're going through a pandemic, do you think it's really necessary to lay off workers, to um, remove all the um, economic benefits for the uh, most um, needed population? Is it really necessary to go there, to have austerity measures like the ones we're having now? Yes, all of that are austerity measures. Obviously, austerity measures are not necessary. They are counterproductive in this context of pandemic. They have generated a weakening of the public health system. That is why thousands of COVID-19 sufferers have died. They have not been able to be traded in public hospitals. That is, the great loss of countries have suffered thousands of people who have died. Investment in health and education have been reduced, but the foreign debt has been paid on time. Millions of dollars that could have gone a long way saving lives have been dedicated to the payment of a thin group of Ecuadorian debt bondholders. In general, austerity measures are counterproductive when the economic cycle is down, by there are even worse during a pandemic. That is why many countries have refused to apply. Many countries have said it's not the time for story. It is the time for the protection of life and health. The Moreno government has done just the opposite. This is uh, the reason for the enormous number of deaths and sex, but also austerity only for the poor and middle class people. With the ridges, with the allocations, there has been no austerity. They have continued they have to benefit from that cut and large tra transfers in a country with a GDP of uh, 100 uh, uh, million dollars. There is a tax expenditure that is the uh, transfer for the rich people for already for 7.5 
billions. That is the situation. That is so Diego, you were once a, f a finance minister, so you know a lot about uh, creditor bonds and paying our foreign debt. What is happening now in Ecuador? How is the, the government of Moreno paying these debts and how is it affecting our economy? Of course, when the Moreno decide pay the debt, the external debt for a tiny group of bondholders, the national economy, the domestic economy, is in very big problem. There are lots of jobs, the bankrupt of the enterprises, the down of the production. In the first cut of the central bank for this year, the economy goes fall at already 10%. This is the greatest fall in the recent history. So what happened in Ecuador um, compared this government to the past government? We used to be an example on how to handle an economy during the government of Rafael Correa. So what is happening with this government? Why is it saying that, we, that our economy is going down, that we have no way to pay our debts, that no way to uh, fund uh, social programs, health programs, education programs? What happened? What went wrong? Uh, Lenny Moreno betrayed those who voted for him. During the electoral campaign, he offered to promote government programs that improves the economy, create new jobs, build uh, thousands of homes, improve uh, education and health. Contrary to that, it has dedicated itself to benefit the regions. He has even forgiven debts of people who have paid the taxes. It has facilitated this missile of work. Public investment spending has increased in the midst of economic decline. He received an economy that was growing, and it is uh, three years of government that the economy has continually increased. For this year, I say the central bank forecast a decrease of around 10%. The largest drop in all of the recent history, instead of continuing a productive and social investment, it has made itself to privatize and public company. It has promoted the neoliberal agenda, contrary to the well-being of the population. In March of the last year, he decided to sign an agreement with the International Monetary Fund, and that has been sashed despite the bad experience of Ecuador and other Latin American countries with the IMF signed thus agreement, this have meant a less public investment, greater external debt, and an increase in employment and poverty. That is the result of the Moreno's government. Now, the government of Moreno is saying that this is all the fault of the last government because they spent too much money in investment on, on social programs, on education and health. Is it really the fault of the last government that we are in this situation that we, according to the current government, we don't have enough money to pay for hospitals, for uh, medical equipment to, to fight the pandemic? That, that is not real because the... Uh, the before government of the president uh, Correa uh, have uh, has uh, invested in uh, education in in the uh, uh, real economy to increase the uh, capacity of uh, Ecuador to produce. In this uh, government, the poverty has fallen, the inequality has diminished, diminished. With Moreno. All of these indicators, macroeconomic indicators, social indicators, goes to uh, falling. Indeed. So I also want to talk about the political part because all of these uh, have effects on our economic stability and our, our political stability as well. But what is happening with the government now? Because we see cases of corruption that continue to appear. We saw 
the case of the uh, documents for disabilities being used to buy uh, overpriced, uh, to buy um, very expensive cars, the overpricing in body bags and medicine to treat COVID-19 patients, even in the contracts to buy food for families that need it. How are those cases affecting the current government, which is uh, just a couple of months away from ending its term? The support of Lenny Moreno has fallen down. In the middle of the shell tragedy, there have been many cases of corruption. This is a miserable thing. Bags of cadavers have been uh, purchased at 12 times the market price. Food, uh, eight kids have been purchased twice as much. Bribes have been asked for given information about the place where the dead are to the relatives. But the greatest corruption is to seek a renegotiation of the external debt, recognizing the price of the bonds at a thousand and a hundred percent, hundred percent, when in the market they have dropped to 30 percent of their nominal value. This would be a gigantic loss for normal loss for the country, greater than all of the hateful cases of corruption that have been reported. So how, how do you see the future of this government? Because um, as of now, we think, we might think that the government is not going for a re-election. Lenny Moreno is not trying to be president again. But will it support uh, any candidate? What is going to happen in the next elections for, for the government? The electoral uh, uh, panorama the, is not clear. It's very uncertain. The electoral panorama for 2021 20, is still uncertain. There have been uh, attempts to postpone the elections. It uh, has been said uh, that making elections in the in these pandemic circumstances would be uh, unsafe for the population. The most uh, insecure, in my view, thing is not to make elections and continue with a government that has caused so much pain for the population. People want a change of government. No one agrees to postpone uh, the election. Only certain groups in government who know that they will lose their privilege and will have to answer to justice for their action. There is a lot of division between uh, the, the parties of their rights, for instance. It has been announced that several candidates from that sector will run in the elections. So, the left and progressive groups and movements have a great challenge. That challenge is the unity of progressive parties and movements to participate in the 2021 election and win. It is imperative to win back the government to push for a pro-people policy, a policy that puts human beings ahead of capital, a political agreement that allows Ecuador to be removed from the abyss in which the government of Led Moreno is living it. And what is the panorama also for the political parties? Because uh, you are part of a, a political party. We've seen a couple of moves by the electoral court to try to forbid certain parties from presenting uh, presidential candidates for these elections. What is the situation going on so we can explain our audience what is happening at the moment? The most important about this is the effort of the, all of the state institutions to uh, prevent the electoral participation of former president Rafael Correa. Several trials have been instituted. Justice has been uh, pursued to uh, sentence the president. Last minute rules have been placed so that can, he, he cannot appear. Finally, his political party has been suspended. Now it's different because the uh, Tribunal Contencioso Electoral has suspended this measure. But at the moment, the former president 
has been forced to make alliance with other existing parties through which he could participate in this election. However, all these actions revealed a persecution and uh, make the electoral process no transparent. That uh, will be uh, a very problem for our, our country. And what do you think will be the first actions that the next government will have to take on matters of uh, the economy, social issues, politics, to try to take back on all the mistakes that this government has done? The first, the first action of the, of the last government will be change all of this uh, line of political, economic and social political of the, of the government. Put the, the people, put the human being be, be, behind the, the, the capital. And, okay, so we've seen that Ecuador went through a lot of protests in the past, in October specifically, against the government, against the IMF, that you mentioned all the actions that the IMF had um, demanded from the government of Ecuador. Do you think that we'll be able to see something maybe similar to these protests in the remaining months of the year or even for next year, uh, depending on what happens in the elections? Uh, so, so the, depending what happened with the, the, the pandemic, the, the, the pandemic is not finished. The, the people uh, continue to die, the people who continue to sick, to come sick, then the people is not ready to, to go to the streets and protest uh, uh, like uh, the people was in October. That is a the condition different to express the protest, uh, uh, the mobilization, the political and social mobilization in this moment. But the people who want to change the government and the people who want another uh, kind of government uh, and government uh, close to the people, uh, favorable to the people, not for the religious people, but for the uh, great capital. Great. And just for uh, our last question, how can you uh, compare to how Ecuador is doing now, now politically and economically with other regions or with other countries in our region? For example, Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, countries that we've always been comparing to uh, on our economic side. How do we look when we compare each other? We, we have two groups of countries to, to, to cooperate. First, uh, Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. The, the political of this country is similar to the, politica, uh, to the policy of the Moreno government. But uh, the results uh, in this country about the management of the pandemic is worse. The people uh, in this country died in the same level in the, with the, our country. But there are other countries like Venezuela, like Cuba, with another kind of uh, manage the, the, of the crisis, and the result is very, very, very good for the people. The, the die, the people who die, the people who come sick, is uh, uh, less than with uh, our countries or, or the other countries. But I, I, I say. And. I don't know, if, uh, for a lot of our viewers, maybe they're um, wondering what, what is happening with this government, why it's, it is not falling, because we have saw a lot of governments in Ecuador, at least for uh, 10 years ago, that a lot of governments in our country will fall down very easily. We would see protests uh, outside the presidential palace here in Quito, and just days after, the government will fall. There's a lot of pressure. Um, put on, on governments, on presidents. What happened with this government? I'm not saying that it should fall, but I'm saying what happened that it, it did not fall as many of the previous governments that we've had, Bucaram, uh, with different governments that we've had that have destroyed our economy, have uh, dollarized our economy, uh, for example, Jamil Mawad. Why does this government stay afloat? That, that is simply the answer. This government don't have 
the support of the people. But this government have a support of the big power, economic power, political power, and I, I said imperial power. That is the reason. That's a very interesting answer for our question. Thank you very much for joining us, Diego. Thank you. So we've been talking to economist Diego Borja on what actions, or better, lack of actions, the government of Ecuador, of Lenin Moreno, is doing in Ecuador, and how the government has put us in this situation. We are dealing with corruption amidst a pandemic, with our economy suffering at all scales, and a political uncertainty that is making us lose the country we fought so hard to get, taking us back decades. Thank you for joining us. This is Interviews from Quito. I'm Carla Gonzalez. Until next time.